We begin. Both fighters bigger than their last strike force appearances. Overing three pounds heavier than the when he fought Rogers. They're doomed seven and a half pounds bigger than when he defeated Fyodor Emelianenko. It's their doom coming out with the strikes early on. That's what he needs to do. He can't stay at the end of the punches of Overeem. Overeem squatting nice and low. He's got all his power pent up right there. Verdum training is striking with noted Muay Thai trainer Rafael Cordero. Nice brawl by Overeem, he says. Verdum, get up. <laughs> <laughs> He's he right. knows again. Oh, he catches the kick, drops him again. Oh, that's got to that's gotta wear on the nerves of Fabricio. You know, Verdum said that Overeem was his son after he defeated him in 2006. I don't think he's going to get a Father's Day card from uh, Overeem. Fabricio Verdum told us, I want to get this fight on the ground. Alistair Overeem told us, Good I'm not going to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look like he's going there. He's look at the strength, the strength of Alistair Overeem. And Verdum is telegraphing the takedown, yeah. not setting it up whatsoever. Well, he's nervous about the strikes, and rightfully so. As long as he keeps punching, though, he'll be able to get some penetration on that shot. The moment he stops punching, he's going to be in trouble. Oh, he's looking at the feet. He's going to come up with a knee. Verdum looking for all kinds of ways to get this down. Head movement by Overing. And he shook it off and said, Nope. Big right hand. Missing by Overing. They're doing post guard momentarily. And Overing just stands up. Oh, body shot. Blocked though by Verdue. Lever shot there. As long as Verdum stays aggressive with this punching. Two minutes to go in the first round, scheduled for three. Interesting strategy being applied by both fighters in the first. Now, one thing that Verdum can do is kick and kick hard because it's okay if he falls to his back after a kick. That's where he wants to be. Verdum shooting again, another sprawl. And Overeem just stands up and makes the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt get to his feet. And to do a wrestling takedown, to get down there, squat, and propel yourself forward takes a lot of energy. He's not doing what Fyodor Emelianenko did when Verdun was on his back and going into his guard. Nice left that. hook by Overeem. And that's what Fabricio Verdun did against Fedor Emelianenko. He lured him. He lured him in. That's right. People thought that he was actually hit with a punch. He says he wasn't. He wanted Fedor to think he was hurt. Nice right hand. What strength, folks. <laughs> Manhandling him. Please come down. <laughs> Please come down. <laughs> Overeem thinking about it and says, no, get up. What about this strategy here, Frank? It's a brilliant strategy. I mean, this is the game. You know, striker versus grappler. This is what you do. Overeem's got far more power and understanding of the striking as well as confidence. He's only counterpunching now and measuring. strategy, just getting them right back up. And Moro, you called a lot of fights around the world. How often do you see something like this? Well, this is, uh, again, it's a strategy that's very important. That, uh, you know, now here we see Verdum wanting them where he wants them, but time is running out, and the clock's his biggest enemy. Antonio Silva, of course, wants to face 
Fabricio Verdum, he'll face the winner of this fight, Verdum handing him a defeat earlier in his strike force career. And here, here's the game. This is, he made his intentions clear. He picked the leg, he jumped out of the way. Alistair Overeem keeping enough distance so there's no ground game whatsoever. And he's, ta he's taking shots because he's only worried about the takedown, but he's so confident, so strong in his position. This is what he's gonna do each and every time. And this was the first big shot that landed and dropped for Brice Verdun. Halfway blocked by his hand, but a good solid left hook that he kind of paused and threw out there. Coffee Strike telling a crazy story. Verdun threw more strikes. Over him three for three and takedowns. Verdun 0 for six. Round two. Scheduled for three five-minute rounds. This is the Strike Force World Grand Prix quarterfinal heavyweight bout between Alistair Overeem, who is a Strike Force champion. His belt is not on the line tonight. He's in black against Abu Dhabi champion Fabricio Verdun, who's coming off the biggest victory of his career as he submitted the great Fedor Amelianenko for his first legitimate loss. There's a knee by Verdun. Now a knee by. Overing with great wrestling hip through the knee and then pulled him out and turned him sideways. And one of the reasons Overing is nice getting hit, one of the reasons Overing is getting hit is he's really squared up because he's just waiting to power punch and stop that takedown. And yet he's showing improvement in the striking as well. Connecting with a nice combination, but frustrated that unable to get Overing to the ground and keep him there. Oh, nice takedown this time by Verdum. A scramble, Overing gets back to his feet. And a knee by Excuse me, by Verdum, another knee. Right hand by Verdum. And this is the game that Verdum wants to play. Over, he thinks over and will get tired. Got to be careful with that distance. Verdum landing some strikes here. Now wants to pull guard again. There's a leg up on the head. Shades of Peter Emilianenko and Verdum, but over and able to walk away. Over and getting up slower and slower. Verdun's getting up slower and slower. And last time his leg was hurt a little bit. He saw him limp. Nice left hook by Overeem. Now he goes downstairs, upstairs with the right hand. That was a big shot. That left hook was a really big shot. Looping right hand by Alistair Overeem. Verdun looks awfully tired. He took two big shots. But all those failed takedown attempts, Frank, it's a lot, of, a lot of energy. Plus, psychologically, you get in there and your biggest you know, attempt to change position gets thwarted. And this is not an opportunity for Verdun to rest. Referee admonishing him, imploring him to get back to his feet immediately. Overeem ripping up, up. right hand. Pulls him into his guard. Overeem's got to stand up. His corner's yelling for him to stand up. They're both just Verdum resting. And the last time they fought, you called the fight. How did Verdum set him up, Mo? Well, this is the thing. I mean, Overeem actually looked very good in the early going of that fight and actually had five of seven takedowns in the opening fight, but it was Verdum who was able to exploit Overeem's relative inexperience on the ground at the time, able to reverse him from the back, snap Keeping his head right in the center. That's going to stop the hips from coming out of Verdum and stop the submission holds from happening. And Overeem makes Verdum get up once again. Verdum trying to rest, lazily getting to his feet. If I were Overeem, I'd take advantage of that, Frank. Yeah. As soon as he's getting up, showing that lackluster and guard is. Again, that hurt him, that knee. Yes, he's pulling guard, but that hurt him. Verdun is demoralized. That knee landed too. Come 
Verdun controlling over his posture. Foot on the hips now to the close guard, but nothing doing for the uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt on the bottom. Yes, one of the best bottom games in the sport. Seven seconds to go in the second round, scheduled for three, five-minute rounds. This is the Strike Force World Grand Prix quarterfinal heavyweight bout. Alistair Overeem, the Strike Force heavyweight champion, on top in black for Brice Overdue, the two-time Abu Dhabi champion, and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt on the bottom. In our first Grand Prix fight of the night, Josh Barnett with a decisive win over Brett Rogers. Yes, setting up the uh, semifinal fight with Sergey Heratana. Fans not liking the action here, though, in Dallas. And, and really, Overeem said he was going to come out uber aggressively going for the knockout. That's not necessarily the case. A good scramble coming from the big men. Overeem cost him a lot of energy here, but he popped up, hits out, sit out, came right back up into the game. Nice movement for a big giant man. Verdun was not short on the punches and knees. He was getting shots in and doing good damage. Much better striking this fight than back in 2006 from Verdun. And this has been the counter shot right there to the chin. Stopping the takedown, countering with that knee, and also countering with just tight punches on the inside. Tony Silva is enjoying it. Maybe he's relishing it, saying, you know what, I don't care who wins this fight. I'm ready to take either of these guys on. I like what I see. We're ready for the final round. Alistair Overeem, Fabricio Verdue. Fabricio Verdue looks like he's been winded since late in the first round. Third and final, gents, come on. Tested on the ground in round two, much more even. And here, Verdum again feeding Wolverine. Good counter right hook there. And another one. How do you have it after two rounds, Frank? I think Overeem's running away with it so far, but he's getting tired now. That's starting to concern me. Overeem, Frank, so strong. He's strong, but he's doing a lot of power moves, and that's that, that costs a lot of energy. This is a position I did not expect to see him in. Oh, they're doing trying to roll through and monkey roll. Monkey roll. Catch his catch can. See a little bit of monkey business in this fight, actually. Verdun was just wanting it on the ground, but and he gets hurt again, but yet he uses that to pull guard. I don't know if it's the smartest strategy to take shots like that. He's punching first, though. That's what's keeping him in the game. As long as he keeps striking, he can jump to that every time. Over yeah, he gets comes hit with a counter. With a hard counter before or after. There's no other way. Yeah. Overeem's puffing now. Look at him. He's puffing. Well, Overeem said he wanted to use this tournament to make a statement while he's controlling this fight. Not exactly the fireworks that fans here in Dallas anticipated. Overeem had a four-month training camp for this. He said he's the biggest, longest, strongest camp you've ever had, but he's winded. I can see him puffing from here. The reason it was so long is because there was talk that they would meet in April, but here it is taking place in June, a month that's been very good to Fabrizio Verdum. Of course, last June, shocking Fedor, and again, here's the monkey business I'm talking about. <laughs> and that's been the theme of this fight. Nice right hand by Verdum. The funny thing is, Verdum hurts. He's connecting on over, He's like he's scoring. And I don't know if it's just over him not respecting his striking power, lulling him into his false sense. He's got to be very careful. Overeem's been knocked out before. And Overeem's just power punching. He's not doubling up. He's just looking for power punches every single time. Six of his 11 losses have been via form of KO for Overeem. And the last time he was knocked out, none other than Sergei Heratonov, who, of course, is in the 
tournament. And uh, in fact, Heratonov lost to Verdum in Pride via split decision, but holds a KO win over Overeem. And the more I see of the tournament, the more maybe Heratonov may not be a dark horse after all. Ian Barnett, very intriguing semifinal matchup. And again, Antonio Silva, I think, has to like what he sees out of these two guys in terms of what he can do to impose his will and skill. I don't know if I'm impressed with either of these two guys tonight, Frank. Well, this is a tough matchup. I mean, stylistically, very, very tough. And they both burned a lot of energy. Conditioning is key. 128 to go in the third and final round. <laughs> the crowd fans start to chant, stand them up. Not exactly what you want to hear in the main events. In the quarterfinal round, Overeem needs to get more aggressive here. And Verdum just should start turning those hips and changing angles. He's got good wrist control. He's in good position to start floating those holes. A minute to go. In the third and final round of the Strike Force World Grand Prix quarterfinal bout between Alistair Overeem and Fabricio Verdum. And this is not what we thought we'd see. Nope. There's some arm control. And uh, but Overeem has got to go careful. for it. Yeah, Overeem's got to go for it. He's got to get the legs up. He's got to start turning those hips, give his back, do something. And Overeem will stand Verdum up once again with 30 seconds remaining in the round. And then credit Overeem. He is taking Overeem's shots. He's, you know, he's marked up his face, but he's showing a lot of grit. I think in the striking, wow. he's landing he, more in the striking. Exactly, in this round. Now some blood coming out of the nose of Alistair Overeem. Eight. There's a leg lock. Knee bar. Seven seconds. Knee bar, but the knee's getting past the groin. Verdum threw more strikes and landed more strikes in that third round, but not the main event that we had hoped for here in Dallas. And Valentine Overeem seems to be content, of course, coming off a disappointing loss early, but having got his brother Alistair into martial arts at 15 and watching him become the Strike Force Heavyweight Champion, the K1 World Grand Prix Champion, but after a scintillating 2010, not exactly the start to 2011 that we expected from Alistair Overeem and from Fabricio Verdum, just couldn't uh, solve the size, and while he got it to the ground, was unable to do much. Nah, I was kind of disappointed that we didn't get, a, didn't get a finish out of it, but... Let's take a look at the numbers here, Frank, in terms of fight time, and uh, again, uh, you know, 8.04 in the stand-up, very, very close, and they were each in their own respective domains and unable to do much. I mean, Overeem did hurt uh, Verdum for the majority of the fight, and I think that's why he will take this 30-27, but uh, again, if you're Alistair Overeem, are you impressed with your performance? Uh, I, I kept to say no. I mean, especially as big as he talked and as, as big as he was coming, and you how know. much is at stake in this tournament? I think it's going to give these guys confidence. Especially so. Good back and forth here. Good back and forth. And you know what? Verdun was really starting to come on in the striking area. As Alistair fatigued out, he was only one punching it. He was only power punching it. Verdun coming with combinations, reaching. You know, good balance, good center, and falling up that knee. A couple of those knees landed on Overeem, and I wonder if some of those knees tired him out. But. Overeem did not finish with the strength he thought he would, that we thought he would. This is a tough bout. A good position, I mean, going for it all the way to the end, Fabricio Verdum, he had a heel hook and knee bar combination. That foot right there from Alistair Overeem, keeping that hold from actually happening, and time ran out. All right, here with the official decision, once again, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Doc Hamilton scores about 29 to 28. Judges Cecil Peoples and Kerry Hatley both score about 30 to 27. All three in favor of the winner. Continuing to the semifinals in the Strikeforce Heavyweight World Grand Prix, the Demolition Man, Alistair.